Amen. Praise God. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. All right. I was having such a good time, and then I remembered I'm speaking. <laughs> oh, man. But, man, the, can, the presence of God is here. It's uh, what, a, what a precious time this is. And for all of us to come together and to have the same focus, uh, we're going to see, we have seen, and we will continue to see lives touched, bodies healed. It's, praise God, this is really, really great. Amen. I, uh, I'm trying to think what I want to do first here. I mean, I'll just get this out of the way. I want to give away my book, He Healed Them All. How many have read this? Okay, is it any good? I, uh, I read this when I was sick with cancer. Uh, and I thought, it's a pretty good book. So <laughs> if we can give this to someone that uh, got all kinds of hands out there. It's available out in the concourse. Amen. How many of you uh, like to go to the ocean, the beach? You like the sound of water? Or if you're not close to a beach, you like the sound of a running creek or a river or a fountain? or some kind of a water thing in your yard or someone's yard. We like the sound of water. And uh, I've thought about that for a long time and I, I, came, across a ver I came across several verses actually, but uh, one of them I'll read to you, Ezekiel 43.2. Ezekiel 43.2 says, and behold, the glory, of the, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east, his voice, was like the sound of many waters, and the earth shone with his glory. And I thought about that, and I thought, that's why we like water. That's why we like the sound of, of moving water, of rushing water, of waves. It's the sound, it's, it imitates or is similar to the sound of God's voice. And that made sense to me. And then I came across another verse in uh, Matthew, Ma or, uh, Matthew 13, 1. And it says, on the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. And I thought, he did it too. <laughs> In his time, now people gathered around him immediately to be taught, but he wanted to sit by the sea. He, he's, there's something about the voice of God. And that's what I want to talk with you tonight about, is the voice of God. And I feel rather overwhelmed uh, Tonight, I, I remember a time in Chile when uh, I had a meeting and uh, one person came, a lady in her 80s, and I went ahead and preached to her as if the room was full, and this is better, uh, <laughs> amen. But I just feel such a responsibility to represent, I mean, I have things in my heart and, and I want them to come out to bless you. And I want us to hear the voice of God. Everyone in this room needs to be in tune with God's voice. That is what is going to change your life, whether it's a physical change that you need or a mental, emotional, relational, whatever it is. We all need to hear God's voice and that does not need to be or should not be an infrequent thing. That should be daily. It should be daily. Didn't Jesus say in Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He's comparing hearing God to eating. How many of you eat uh, several times a day? We won't count, but he's comparing hearing God to the frequency of eating. We should be so in tune with the spirit of God that, that we, we are walking in a, we could say, supernatural life. The voice of God is the power of God. When he speaks, things happen. Creation came into being by the voice of God. Everything is being sustained by the word of God. Anything that, that he speaks over, he calls things that are not as though they were. Whenever God speaks, something happens. And God has given us the privilege of being able to speak his word as if we were him. Whoever says to this mountain, Whoever says to this cancer, whoever says to this issue, 
be removed and be cast into the sea, you have the privilege of not only hearing, but of being the replicator of that voice and of speaking the word of God and bringing change. This, this is powerful. The word of God in our mouths has the same potential as the word of God in Jesus' mouth. But we got to be hearing it first. Amen. We've got to be in tune with God. How many remember radios? <laughs> There's some folks here from my generation. Radios, you know, cords plugged into the wall, knobs, dials, and what have you. You remember, if you're trying to hear a game or a certain station or something, you have to tune it. And some of them, you just, oh, you just, between here and here, <laughs> you know, it, the signal changes. We have so many voices in the world today. Yeah. I, you know, it, it, it's mind boggling the, the technology that we have and the ability we have to hear anything at any time from anywhere. And part of it I like because we have, for example, all of our, all of our live Bible studies, we have our conferences, everything is available to you guys 24 seven around the world. I mean, that's cool. Yeah. But other things are also available that aren't so cool. Yeah. And there is a competition for your ear. There is a tremendous competition for your ear. And I'm not talking about the ears on the side of your head only. I'm talking about the ears of your heart. There is a, a competition to, uh, we could go back to the Garden of Eden. The competition began immediately with the serpent. Has God said? A new voice came into the scene. They only had heard God's voice. And then a new voice showed up. A new voice is what we're all dealing with. We're all dealing with the voices that are of the world. We're all dealing with the information that's coming. We're dealing with the news. We're dealing with politics. We're dealing with all of these kinds of things. And in the midst of that, your only answer is to hear God. But can you, will you take the time to hear God? Is this, I, are, are we tracking together here? Yeah. Okay. So it says, I, I want to I go to Elijah for a second here. I haven't started yet, but I will. <laughs> Elijah, when we'll go into the whole story, but he went up on Mount Horeb, which as I understand was probably Mount Sinai. It had two names. And he hid in a cave. He was running from uh, the queen that was out to get him. And the Lord spoke to him. In 1 Kings 19, I'm gonna read 11 and 12, and it says, he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord and be behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. How many of you have heard people say every tragedy, every disaster, every, that God must have done that. Yeah. And God's not in those things. He's not in disasters. He's not into tragedies. It says... But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still small voice. And this is very significant for me. I want to share a little bit of my story. That three years ago, uh, in uh, May of 2020, right as COVID was breaking forth and all of this, I, uh, I preached here at Campus Days. We were live streaming Campus Days. On May 14th, I was preaching here. I noticed that morning when I got up that I was turning yellow. So, not a big deal, I don't pay attention, you know. So I came here and I preached, I wasn't feeling great, I hadn't been feeling very well for a while. And my son Daniel, he said, Dad, you don't look good, you look yellow. And I just, I don't know, I just keep going. And uh, I had had a blood test earlier that week uh, because of some symptoms and I thought, well, I probably should get checked out, this has been going on too long. And then the, the next day after having preached here, I get a phone call from the doctor's office. They say, Barry, stop what you're doing. Get to the emergency room right now. And I said, why, what's up? And they said, well, your numbers are off the chart. And I don't know what that means, but it sounded like a good deal, you know. <laughs> your numbers are still on the chart. Mine were off the chart, <laughs> amen. So I go to the emergency room and we go through this whole long thing. But 
Eventually, what happens is the, the admitting doctor walks in, he looks at all my results, a scan, an x-ray, and what have you, and he looks at it, he said, Mr. Bennett, I don't know if you're a man that likes to make plans, but you need to make some. You need to get your affairs in order. And I thought, what? And I was completely, I can't even explain to you how disoriented I was, I, how shocked I was. I said, I was just preaching yesterday. And now you're telling me I'm gonna die? He says, if you hadn't come in today, you would have been de dead by Monday. And what, what turns out is that I had a giant tumor on my pancreas, as I later found out, the size of a softball. I didn't know there was room in there for that, but anyway. Uh, it had shut down my pancreas and my liver. Both had stopped working. And I was being poisoned to death with bile. And that was problem number one. And then as time went on, we found out that I had non-Hodgkin lymphoma. All of that is being relayed to me over, over time, but the, the immediate get your affairs in order was the first thing that, that was told to me. And I was completely dumbfounded. But I didn't freak out. And as I look back on this now, I realize I didn't freak out because I have been in the habit of hearing God my whole Christian life. I have a book out there called Hearing God where I go through some of those events in my life. I have a foundation to where I could have reacted from my emotions, I could have reacted from you know, freaking out, I could, but I reacted from my spirit. I mean, I didn't shift in bed, I didn't sit up, I didn't scream, I, didn't, I just stayed still in the bed and the, the still small voice spoke to me. I can't, I don't, it wasn't audible, it was a quickening, it was a more, I think more accurately, it was a knowing. I knew, and what I knew that was quickened to my spirit is, Barry, you will not die from this. That saved my life. Being able to hear, it wasn't the doctor's distraction, we could say it wasn't the earthquake, it wasn't the fire, it wasn't the wind, it wasn't the doctor. I heard God. Hearing God saved my life. Now I have several stories. Now, I had to go through a year of, of stuff. It wasn't what I would have preferred. Maybe I'll talk about that more in a minute. But I've had other instances. My son, my, my firstborn, uh, was declared dead in the womb 45 years ago with sonogram proof and no heartbeat and the whole thing. And I was shown all of this information. And the, the doctor's words were, the fetus is dead. And that voice came to me. Now, it wasn't still and small this time. It was a little bit stronger. It was no. But it came from the Spirit of God. No. And the fetus is now 44 years old. He's doing well. Amen. <laughs> About 15 years ago, bear with me while I tell a few stories because I'm going to get back into, into the word here. But I just want you to, to, to understand where I'm coming from. About 15 years ago, I was working here actually at, at Elkton and it's in the springs, I was working in the phone center at the time and I started having kidney stone issues. Anyone, anyway, you don't want that. But, uh, uh, and it, it was going on for months and months and I would have periods of, of freedom and then I would have periods of incredible agony. And finally after nine months, one, one weekend, I mean it just wouldn't go away, I was going through like two days of agony. And uh, finally I told Betty Kay, either shoot me or take me to the emergency room, I can't. I was hoping for the shooting part, but anyway. Uh, my wife, so she took me to the emergency room and I walked in to the, like this and the policeman said, have you been shot? I, said, I wish. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I got in the emergency room, they immediately rushed me in. They, they, there was all these people waiting in the waiting room, they rushed me in. and. Uh, I said, why did you take me in front of all these people? And the nurse says, we don't want you to scare everybody. <laughs> so and so they, they scan me, they do x-ray me, I don't know what all they do, and they come back and they say, Mr. Bennett, you have a kidney stone that is so large it will never pass without intervention. And uh, by then they had, I said, do you, do you want painkillers? And I said, yep, yeah. <laughs> go for it, industrial strength, give me all you got. So, so I'm, I'm, and they said, this is what we have to do to get this stone out. And when he described it, 
Oh, you medical people. <laughs> the spirit of the Lord rose up inside of me. <laughs> and another no came out. And I'm not making this up. I said, unhook me, unplug me, undo me, whatever, I'm leaving. And they said, this, you're, you can't pass this. I said, watch me. <laughs> uh, two days later, it passed with no pain. No pain. Because the Spirit of God quickened me. Now, sometimes you've got to hear the devil before you, the Spirit of God gets quickened. And about five or six years ago, I had something growing in my ear. And that's not good. So I went and finally, after time, had it checked out. And they did a biopsy and it comes back cancerous. And so uh, he says, you're going to have to have an operation. The operation is going to be significant enough that you're going to need plastic surgery. And I thought, well, will I look like Elvis? N no. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, they, he said plastic surgery, and the Spirit of God rose up inside of me and said, no. I heard something from the Spirit and said, no. And so I went home, and I told my wife, and, and she said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm not going to do it. And then two weeks later, I get a certified letter in the mail. You must have this surgery. You must have plastic surgery. You must, you must, you must. That's probably legal stuff for them. And I just tore it up. I said, I'm not doing this. I am not doing this. And it took a year. Now, Andrew's took six or seven. I beat you. Mine took a year. <laughs> it took a year, but it's perfectly healed because I heard God. I heard God with the cancer. I would not die. Now, I wish I had heard, get up and walk home, go home and, and you're healed. I wish, I would have loved to have heard that. Yeah. I didn't hear that. I went through 11 chemos and I went through a CAR T cell transplant. And people wrote me and, and were disappointed in me. And uh, don't you feel guilty about taking chemo and all this? And, no, I feel pretty good right now, actually. Uh, <laughs> I'm here, amen. amen. And so uh, I, I've been, what, my point in all of this and sharing all of this is that I've been in these situations in which I could have only had my soul to live from, only my emotions. I could have only done what the voices of the world were saying. I could have gone that route and I would not be here. But because I can hear God, because I have conditioned or I have lived in the spirit long enough to notice the nuances of the spirit, to be aware of these things. And I'm not saying I do it perfectly and there are times when I have no doubt have missed it, but I've hit it enough to still be here. You in this room are one word of God away from your answer. Whatever it might be, it might be a word that brings an instant harvest or it might be a word that begins the growth of the harvest, but you're one word away. And everyone during this week, you need to be thinking and be sensitive about what is God speaking to me? What, is, what has leapt in my heart? What has come alive inside of me? What, am I, what do I want to write down and not forget? That's God speaking to you. If I were to ask you right now, how many of you believe in watermelons? Okay, two or three, okay. <laughs> How many of you have watermelons growing in your backyard right now? Okay, we got a few. Okay, but very few. Why don't the rest of you, didn't you just tell me you believe in watermelons? Why don't you have watermelons growing in your yard? You haven't sowed a seed. Nothing has been sown in the ground to bring forth a watermelon. You can believe in healing all day long. But if nothing's been sown in your heart, and so many people are frustrated, I believe in healing, I believe in healing, I believe in healing. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Yeah. And nothing has been sown in your heart. You haven't heard anything. Nothing has been quickened to you. Thus, nothing is growing. The soil isn't sensitive to the seed. There's no seed. And what's happening here this week is that you're having an opportunity. Now this may be common for you. You may be hearing God all the time, praise God, or you may, this may be completely new for you. But I am telling you from experience, you're only one word of God away from your victory. Amen. 
but can your heart hear it? Can your heart hear what God is saying? Go with me, if you will, to uh, Matthew 13, 15. Matthew 13, 15. Jesus is speaking of this very subject. He says, for the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears, he's not talking about the ears on the side of their head. He's talking about the ears of their heart, of their spirit man. Their ears are hard of hearing. Their eyes, they have closed, spiritual eyes lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should heal them. What Jesus is saying is the problem here isn't the will of God. And in our case, this is now, that was pre-cross, we're post-cross, the healing has been accomplished. So that's not the issue. The issue is, are you hearing anything? Are you seeing anything? Is your heart alive to anything? When's the last time you know you heard from God? And for some of us, it may be a long time. I expect to hear from God every day. And again, it's not that I, I'm sure I've missed it. No doubt. But I'm way down the road in this. And this is what has saved my life. And when they say, get your affairs in order, what are you going to do? And I get letters from people and they are spazzing out. I don't know what to do. Well, I immediately know and I'm not judging I'm not judging, but I immediately know there's no spiritual foundation there. Nothing's been being planted. Nothing's growing. So when something is, comes, comes against you, you have nowhere to go. There's no harvest there that is ready. Those no's that I had, no, that was just as spiritual as you will not die from this. And it was actually better. I wish I'd had that no this other time. So I missed it somewhere perhaps, but... It doesn't matter. I have conditioned my heart. I've spent enough time with God. And, and I'm going to give you hope here if you haven't spent time with God. Just hold on. But for those of you that are here that are calling yourself believers, as was it Greg today that said this? What should you be doing? Believing. believing. This is a daily thing. Amen. We should be believing God continually. We should be hearing God continually. You should be so hungry for God that this is what you value more than anything else. And yet the distractions, what chokes the word? The cares of this world choke the word. The doctor's voice chokes the word. If he tells you you're going to die, what are you going to do? Well, if the word has been choked, you don't have any other resources. Amen? Amen. We need to be sensitive to the things of God. Jesus just said, we just read it. Eyes closed, ears dull, heart dull. I would heal them. Well, post-cross, he's, he's already healed all of it. I mean, healing is a done deal. But we're not sensitive enough because we're listening to too many other things. And we could make a list of everything that's going on competing for your attention. Basically, they're all the snake. As God said, I find it interesting in Ephesians 6, it talks about uh, quenching all the fiery darts of Satan with the, the shield of faith. King James, New King James, fiery darts. Some of the newer translations talk about flaming arrows. The Amplified Classic says flaming missiles. <laughs> Thinking, good grief. <laughs> I was doing okay with darts, but and now I've got to look out for missiles. <laughs> But we have these competing voices that are trying to steal your peace, steal your faith, steal your joy, kill you. Yeah. If the devil could just kill you, he'd kill you. But he's got to do it with words. And if you're willing to listen, you're on the road to death. Yeah. Who are you listening to? Amen. What, is, what is your heart sensitive to? What do you value? What are you hungry for? And these are questions I ask myself all the time. I want to make sure I don't get off the road because I want to be sensitive to the things of God because you never know when you're going to hear those words. Get your affairs in order. I didn't, I was not expecting that. I thought maybe I had an ulcer. I didn't know what was going on, which is, that was bad enough. I was dealing with that in my head. Ulcer, good grief. No, it's not that. You're going to die. <laughs> okay, that's different. But I was able to hear God. The voice of God is the answer to human problems. 
everything depends upon what we hear. In Luke 5.15, it says, And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. I think it was Andrew talking about this yesterday. How many people come to us and have come to me, I know have come to all of us that minister, and all they want to do is talk. And again, no judgment, but a wake-up call. You don't go to Jesus to talk and be healed. You go to hear and be healed. Don't, you don't have to tell him how bad it is. I've had people come to me with, with pictures of their post-surgical scars. I don't want to see that. <laughs> Telling me every detail, every word, every, every prescription. Every, I don't need to know any of that. Just tell me you don't feel well. Let's, let's agree together. Okay, I don't need the details. Why do you need the details? I need the details of, of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. That's, those are the details I need. Amen? What you hear can kill you. Or it can heal you. What are you hearing? Well, the doctor, but Barry, you don't understand. I do understand. I've been there. I understand perfectly. I understand what it means when they tell you you're going to die that you were two days away from death, they have to immediately save your life. I had to drill a hole through my side and put a tube in and a bag to drain the bile. Those are the worst 10 days of my life. I know what this is. I, I lost 30 pounds. I was in a wheelchair going to my appointments. I'm thinking, this is not me. What happened? I was not prepared for this. I was not thinking about this. The, the, but it, it happened. There it was. Now what am I going to do? You need to hear from God. Through all of that, and I went through a bunch of stuff, through all of that, I had peace. I had emotions, I was up and down, I was cranky, I was grumpy, I was under drug influence of drugs uh, that changed my moods and what have you. I went through a lot of things, physically I went through stuff, but my spirit was solid as a rock. Because I had heard God, and I continued to hear God throughout the ordeal. And I continued to get comfort from God and consolation from God. And I wish I'd gotten a word that said, get up, you're healed. I didn't get that one. Maybe that's my fault. Nonetheless, I don't feel bad about it. Uh, so many people have come to me and said, thank you for sharing your, your story. It gives me hope. Well, if it does that, amen. It, you don't have to die. Amen. You don't have to live with whatever you're living with. Amen. What you have to do is hear God. Now, I want to go to Acts 14. Acts 14. And for those of you that you're thinking, oh, I've never done this, I'm in trouble. Okay, I, let, me, let me pull you out of trouble right now, okay? Let's go to Acts 14. Paul is preaching his first missionary journey. He's traveling the region, and he ends up in Lystra. And it says in verse 7, Acts 14, 7, and they were preaching the gospel there. Okay, I want to highlight that. I'm going to come back to that. They're preaching the gospel there. And in Lystra, a certain man without strength in his feet was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb. So let's, this isn't even a sickness. This is a birth defect. Yeah. People wonder, well, can God do that? Yeah. All right. Who had never walked. This man heard Paul speaking. Paul later says, and I forget if it's 1 Thessalonians, I think it's 1 Thessalonians, that when you receive the gospel that you heard from us, you received it not as the word of men, but as the word of God, which effectually works in you who believe. He's preaching this gospel. And this man heard the gospel. Now, we don't even know if he heard a healing message. Probably not. He heard the gospel message, which includes healing. But specifically being mentioned healing, it's, it's not there. He heard the gospel. How many, of you have, how many of you have heard the gospel? I'll get back to the story here. But the gospel is the power of God into salvation. And that word salvation is the Greek word soteria, which includes physical health, healing, deliverance, everything you need. The gospel is the power of God into salvation. The gospel will set you free from addictions. The gospel will set you free from twisted lifestyles. The gospel will renew your mind to truth. The gospel will set you free. Yes. Praise God. He was hearing Paul preach the gospel. And it says, and Paul, observing him intently and seeing he had faith to be healed. Where did healing come from? Where did that didn't even get mentioned? 
And yet when he heard the gospel, well, what's the gospel? The gospel is the power of the cross to deliver you from the powers of darkness, of corruption, of loss, of perversion, of sickness, of all of the, of the stuff that goes on in the world. The gospel, why do people reject the gospel? They're rejecting life. They're rejecting the way out of this dark world. The gospel is the power of God. And he's listening to this word of the gospel that's coming from a man with the man's accent, with the man's intellectual abilities, but it's still the word of God that works effectually in you who believe. And this man is sitting there lame from his mother's womb, has never heard the gospel, didn't have it on his calendar, get healed today. He was not thinking healing. He was probably thinking begging. He's probably in his spot. This is probably a busy area. That's why Paul stopped there. And yet he hears the gospel. He's never heard God before. But he's hearing Paul preach. He's hearing God. If I could be so bold, you're hearing God. You're hearing the word of God that will set you free. And this man, having never heard this, to our knowledge, it says, and Paul looking at him intently, seeing he had faith to be healed. Oh, that's awesome. Paul could discern this. He could see it. Something in the guy's countenance had changed. He had heard the gospel that sets people free, that gives them eternal life, that heals their bodies. He, he heard the gospel. And when he heard the gospel, faith came alive, though he had probably never heard anything before, never heard God before, was not part of what I've been talking about in the first part of this message, that Christians need to hear God. But this guy wasn't a Christian. But now he has faith to be healed. It's that simple. It's that simple. So I've qualified everybody, I hope. If you're a believer, you need to hear God. If you're a non-believer, you can hear God. And you can be healed. And you can be healed tonight. Or the watermelon can start growing because a seed has been planted. Amen? Amen. And so he leaped and walked because he heard the gospel. Praise God. The power of sin and sickness has been destroyed by the gospel. When the power of sin was destroyed, we'll call that the root. If the root has been destroyed, the fruit, sickness, has no authority. It's lost its authority. The only thing that gives it authority is us listening to the doctors telling us that the sickness has authority. Legally, spiritually speaking, legally, sickness in a believer has no authority. It only has place if you allow it to have place. Every believer, I don't care if you were born again three seconds ago, you have authority over, the, over sickness. Now, if you don't know it or if you don't believe it or if you're dealing with guilt and condemnation and all this stuff, you're going to struggle. But you have the, the authority to rebuke sickness. Didn't he say whosoever? He didn't say whosoever has graduated from Karis or whosoever has graduated from Ramah or whosoever has been a Christian for 65 years. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea and shall not doubt on his heart. He shall have whatever he says. I'm a whosoever. We got any whosoever's in here? Yeah. Amen. But what's going to give you the, the initiative to do that? What gave me the initiative to say no when they said the fetus is dead? No. What gave me the initiative to say no when it, they said we got to do sur surgery on your ear? What gave me the initiative to say no, this kidney stone will not pass, I'm out of here. Check please. And they, they gave me a check. Uh, <laughs> or I gave them one anyway. Uh, but what, what produced the initiative? Hearing God. Being in communion with him, not on Sundays only, but seven days a week, all the time, walking and talking with him. You know what your number one call in life is? We always talk about purpose and not that kind of thing. Put up 1 Corinthians 1.9. 1 Corinthians 1.9, if you would. Oh, I can't see that. 
God is faithful by whom you are called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's your number one calling. If you would get called, if you would obey the call into fellowship, all the other things in your life would, would pan out. Fellowship is your number one call. I just don't know what, I'm, what my purpose is, fellowship with Jesus. But what about the fellowship with Jesus? The more you fellowship with Jesus, the more you're hearing him, the other parts of your life are going to just work. But if you're not, in here, if you're not hearing God, the rest of your life is going to be a disaster. This man was sitting there not planning to get healed. He didn't go to a healing meeting. The meeting came to him. He's just sitting there. And Paul preaches, and, and it appears to me not healing. He preached the gospel. What did Jesus say to the man, the paralytic, that was let down through the roof? First thing he said was what? Son, your sins are forgiven. Why is that significant? Because if that part's been dealt with, take up your pallet and go home. If you deal with the root, you've dealt with the fruit. If you've uprooted the power of sin, if you've forgiven sin, then sickness, it's like dominoes. You knock over the first one, the rest go. Amen. Amen. How many of you are forgiven? Amen. Now don't raise your hands, but how many of you are still dealing with guilt and condemnation? That's the problem. Because if you really knew God, you would not be dealing with guilt and condemnation. You would be walking in freedom. And from a place of freedom, faith flows. That's why when people say, I just can't believe you went to the doctor and I can't believe that. I don't care what you can't believe. I, I'm free. I'm free from your opinion. I'm free to walk with God. I'm free to mess up and I'm free to do it right. And I'm free to get healed one way or the other. I'm free. Because I believe the gospel that God is for me, not against me. God wasn't wringing his hands. Oh, I sure hope he doesn't do chemo. I sure hope he doesn't do chemo. No, God is for me. He loves me even if I do chemo. I had to get over that. I had Christian friends, not friends, enemies, Christian enemies write me. <laughs> all upset with me. They're not in the hospital bed. I didn't see them in there. All right. I had to make some decisions. I have a family that is wanting some decisions made. Uh, I have other things to think about, but I had peace because I heard God. The voice of God is like the sound of many waters. That just blesses my heart. And when you hear the voice of God, all of the fears disappear. All of the frustration disappears. Ladies, well, let, me, let me move on. I'll get to you ladies in a minute. I wanna talk about conception. I'm getting to you pretty quick here. I want to talk about conception. Proverbs 4, I know Andrew mentioned this yesterday, and I'm sure it'll be mentioned more as we go through the conference, and that's okay, that's good. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. It says, my son, give attention to my words. I mean, this is, this is what we need to do. It's just simple. We got Jesus saying, the problem is you're not listening, you're not seeing. And, and here, years before, Solomon is writing the antidote. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Incline your ear. doesn't mean lean across the table and, and make sure you hear me. Incline your heart to my sayings, the ears of your heart. Listen to my word. Turn off the TV. Turn off the distractions, the other voices, the flaming missiles. Turn it off. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. If there's no seed, there's no harvest. But if you keep it in the midst of your heart, your heart is the soil. But nothing will grow if nothing's been planted. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. This is, this is where I live now. I've taken on a new uh, lifestyle. I thought my lifestyle was okay, and it wasn't bad. 
but I've just seen something new. That if I want to walk in health, I'm going to have to walk with the health giver. I'm going to have to be in communion. I'm going to have to be hearing him. I'm going to have to value his voice above the voice of doctors and bankers and lawyers and politicians and TV stars and all of this. I have to value his voice. That has to be number one. And it's not a burden for me. It's it's exciting because who knows what, what God can quicken to you each day. Verses jump off the page. All these live Bible studies that I do, these all, especially since I've been back from, uh, from this, this year-long battle, uh, this is all fresh stuff that I'm just getting, or it's old stuff that's been refreshing, whatever, but it's fresh. Yeah. Because I'm hearing from God all the time. Amen. This, this is how I live. Well, what is that word doing in me? What did, I, what did we just read? What is the word doing in you? It's health to your flesh. I feel better than I've ever felt. It's it's hard to explain, but when the Spirit of God touches you and you're hearing from God, you begin to want to hear more. You begin to get addicted. And I have a testimony of 50 years of this, but the last two years, three years, have been awesome. And I'm happier than I've ever been. I'm better looking than I've ever been. That's my confession. I, I, am, I am stronger. Maybe not in the muscle area, I'm working on that still, but, but I'm stronger in my inner man than I've ever been. Why? Because it saved my life and now I value it more than ever. There was a foundation that had been laid so that when he said, get your affairs in order, I didn't say, oh my God, I'm going to die. I waited and I heard God. I didn't even shift in bed. I just quietly waited until the Lord said, you will not die from this. Okay, I'm good to go. Now, it wasn't fun, but I made it. I made it. Psalm 107.20. Psalm 107.20 says, He sent His word and healed them. Oh, man. He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. What is going to heal you? The word of God. It's either going to be a miracle harvest, seed time harvest, or it's going to be seed time harvest, or it's going to be seed time and harvest. But it's going to have something to do with the seed. You can't get away from that. You're going to have to have the word sown. Now, now, for those of you that are saying, oh, I'm out of this. No, the man at Lystra heard it that day and got healed. It was seed time harvest. Okay, those are the best. But in the meantime, keep sowing the word into your heart and turn off the flaming missiles. Don't listen to those other voices. In Jan- I was driving one day, well, I'm driving every day, but uh, one of the days I was driving, I thought about this verse, James 1.15. James 1.15 says, then when desire is, has conceived, or lust in the King James, when desire or lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. When something is conceived, there's a birth that follows. And sin, when it is full grown, reaches 18. <laughs> <laughs> brings forth death. And the Lord spoke to me. The Lord spoke to me. I heard this. Barry, if you can conceive sin and death, you can conceive healing and health. Now that seems maybe mundane to some of you, but it was a moment for me. I can conceive my healing. And how do I conceive? How do you conceive? Let's not get too graphic here, but it takes some intimacy. Yeah? But the conception is quiet. You don't always know when it happens. But ladies, when you find out it has happened, what happens? Your whole world changes. You have a new vision. You're seeing all new things that need to be done. You're preparing. Why? Because something that hasn't shown up yet has been conceived. You can conceive healing. It hasn't shown up yet, but you know that you know it's coming. 
you know it's growing, you know it's in the soil of your heart, you know the seed has been planted, there's been a conception, there's been a fertilization, something is taking place, and, and people say, but I just don't know why it's taking so long. Who cares? <laughs> keep watering, keep blessing, keep expecting, keep preparing. That's one of the things I did while I was in bed for a year, is I, <laughs> I've shared this many times, but I got on Amazon, because I have a vision for the future, because I know I'm gonna be well, so the future is still mine. Therefore, I'm gonna buy stuff I can't use till I'm healed. <laughs> and I went on Amazon, pra praise the Lord for Amazon, and I bought stuff I couldn't use until I was healed. Now looking back, probably I was under the influence of drugs. <laughs> For some of that, <laughs> but it served its purpose. I brought things for the future because something had been conceived. I'm going to have a baby called healing. I better get ready. But you can't do that unless something has hit the heart and been conceived. The word has got to come alive to you. Is this making sense? His voice is your answer. His voice is your healing. His word is your health. But it has to hit the heart and be conceived. There has to be a birth take place, a conception take place, so that the birth of your health can happen. And it may happen tonight. It may happen next week. It may happen in a year. But it will happen if you know there's been a conception, you'll take care of it. You'll water it. You'll... you'll, you'll Put more word into you. You'll pray in the spirit. You'll know, you know that you know. You don't keep going around saying, why do you think it's taking so long? I don't know. Why do you think it's taking so long? You, don't, you quit talking like that. Yeah. And you say, I know. What is faith? Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Well, quit asking those dumb questions. And start believing God if there's been a conception. If there hasn't been, get with God. Your number one call is fellowship with the Son. Do that. Hear Him. Let the Word of God come alive in your life. How do you know that you've conceived your healing? What comes by hearing? Faith. What does faith create? Vision. You know you have something conceived when you have a vision for the future. You know healing is at work in you when you can start seeing yourself. I started planning vacation. I planned Christmas. I planned this. I, plan I started seeing these things happening. Amen. I saw myself doing live Bible studies. They started that during COVID when I couldn't do it, and I was so jealous in a godly way. That <laughs> I want to do that. That's, that's right up my, in my ballpark, sharing the word of God. I began to see myself doing that. I began to see things. Why? Because faith had come alive in my heart, which produced vision. I'm expecting a baby. I'm expecting health and healing. I will walk in this. I will be on this platform again. I will take my wife on vacation. I will have a blowout Christmas. I will. Why? Because there's been a conception. I will not believe the doctor saying the fetus is dead. I will not believe I need surgery in my ear. I will... Because why? Not because I'm just presumptuous. I heard God. This is, this is so powerful, so, so important. In this room right now, the Spirit of God is here. Some of you have heard him through me. Some of you have heard him in spite of me. Praise God. Some of you are still wondering what I'm talking about. But we have several more days. Be expectant. Expect to hear from God. Let there be, I'd like to see lots of conceptions taking place, if you know what I mean, all right? We need to be having things conceived in our hearts, and some of them will be quick ones. Some of them will perhaps be a process. But you know that you know that you know. You're already making plans for it. Praise God. Let's just stand up. I want to minister with you for a minute. Hallelujah.
Oh, Father, first we just honor you. We thank you for this incredible place to be. We thank you, Father, for this worship that we've been able to be a part of. We thank you for this environment of believing hearts. We thank you that where two or three are gathered, where two or three thousand, you are in the midst. You are here right now. Your word is alive. It just got preached. Your word is alive in the Bible. Your word is, was alive this morning in the messages of this morning. Your word is here. Your word is alive. Father, our hearts, we declare them to be open and sensitive to the word of God. We are not dull of hearing. Our eyes are not closed. We are conceiving your healing for our bodies now in the name of Jesus. We are seeing the future, not with limitations, but free. We are seeing the future healed. We are seeing the future full of joy, full of peace, that we can share a testimony with others how good you are. Whether it takes medical intervention or not medical intervention, that's not the question. The question is, do you see it? Has it been conceived? Can you believe it? Will you prepare for it? Father, I speak over every heart in this room a quickening of the Holy Spirit. That every heart would be sensitive to your spirit right now. To hear you. Even if it's a very still, small voice. That they would hear you. And Father, I speak to every body in this room, every physical body, whatever has come against our bodies. Together, corporately, we take authority in the name of Jesus and rebuke the work of the enemy. Satan, take your hands off. Sickness, you were defeated at the cross. You have no authority. We command you to leave in the name of Jesus. I speak especially to cancer, that demonic thing. I curse you, cancer, in the name of Jesus. In whatever form you have taken, be gone in Jesus' name. As I speak, let things be conceived in you. Let it be conceived. If it applies to you, take it. I speak to failing kidneys. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be delivered, be cleansed in the name of Jesus. I speak to mental issues, dementia, Alzheimer's. No, no, in the name of Jesus. Some of you need to learn how to say no. I speak to heart disease. Be healed, be transformed in the name of Jesus. The gospel has set us free from the power of sin and sickness. We'll take them both. Praise God. Thank you, Father. I speak to arthritis. Be gone. Dissolve in Jesus' name. Joints be reshaped in the name of Jesus. Columns, spinal cords be healed in the name of Jesus. Discs be healed in the name of Jesus. Eyes be opened in the name of Jesus. Ears be opened in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise the Lord, lungs be opened. All of the lung issues that are now so popular on TV, we rebuke that in Jesus' name. We're not listening to that anymore. You have got to protect yourself from those words. Father, we declare we are going to protect ourselves with the shield of faith from all the darts, arrows, missiles, all the negative words that are coming against us. We rebuke that. We are taking possession of your temple, our body. And we are declaring health and healing, deliverance, freedom in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Everybody just give God some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Father, we give you we give you all the praise and glory. Hallelujah. You deserve all the glory in Jesus' name. We are speaking life now, no death. We rebuke the spirit of death. We speak life now, healing now, deliverance now. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God.